Similarly, we would look at uh, uh, deficiencies uh, in people related to iron and zinc in the same way. So these are potential targets where we say a GM solution uh, should be or could be part of an integrated solution. It is never going to be a silver bullet that can get rid of that problem itself. So if we say golden rice uh, and we want to have people eating golden rice, it is to bring up their base supply level in beta carotene by at least 50%. And in addition to that, of course, we also want to promote, or others should promote, diverse, diverse diets, eating other sources of the healthier food that has also vitamin A, the same as other micronutrients. So it is part of a solution. We see it as a part of an integrated solution, not a single silver bullet. And we only do it in cases where there is a big humanitarian need. So that's for us the primary reason why in some cases this is the only choice to, to do. We have no commercial interest in the public sector. Iri is a non-profit organization, PhilRise, who leads the work in the Philippines here as a, a public function. Uh, in the case of uh, GM rice uh, that is developed through the public sector effort, there will be no profits, no commercial winners or interests at all. These varieties in which we are developing this are popular existing varieties that are widely grown by farmers and also consumed by consumers. That is one of our requirements. We just upgrade them with these additional genes and give them therefore healthier rice features in this case. Farmers can keep the seed, they can regrow it. The yield and other agronomic performance characteristics must be the same. You cannot have a yield penalty because that would not be an incentive for a farmer to grow this rice you know, or you would actually lose income. You know. and so the market price of this material when it comes on the market someday hopefully uh, it needs to be low because our target group is the poor consumer, not the, the rich person or middle class person in Alabama or Manila who can eat other sources of vitamin A. So we have clear specifications which are quite different from how a private company would approach uh, a genetic modifi modified crop. So we are a public entity, we have a pro-poor focus, uh, the material is uh, popular varieties, and these are our primary beneficiaries. So I just wanted to explain this because it is fundamentally different from what has been so far available in terms of GM crops worldwide. Thank you, Dr. Doberman. Any directly related questions to what has been said so far? You're going to hold, sir? Okay. Indirect. Well, let's uh, reserve that for the plenary discussion that we're going to have in just a few. A direct question, sir? Yes, please. Uh, I'd like to ask the government if he is as uh, optimistic as Secretary Argala that this country will be self sufficient in rice. <laughs> because I remember Dr. Robert Ziegler said that this country cannot achieve rice efficiency. Uh, I, <laughs> I received this question uh, a couple of years ago and I gave an answer which was then misinterpreted by the media. So I'll try to give a, uh, another answer this time. Uh, I believe that uh, like any other country, the Philippines is capable of being self-sufficient in rice. Uh, there are, of course, always questions surrounding the, this, the nature of self-sufficiency. The first question is, I think, uh, how much rice is actually going to be needed? And there is a debate always going on in terms of the capita consumption and the actual demand. But in principle, given the current level of uh, population and consumption and the available land resources that are on the rice already, and the existing yield gaps that we still have, I believe, in principle, this country can be self-sufficient. How fast and what it takes to close that yield gap and you know, go from an average yield of 4, 4.2 tons to 5 tons or more, uh, that is of course a question that depends on the level of uh, 
investment both by public and private sector. But in principle, we still have uh, uh, quite a yield gap that we can exploit uh, in this country. The bigger longer term question is, of course, uh, how long can you be self-sufficient if the country keeps growing at a rate of 2 2.5% two each year in terms of population? So then, obviously, you're in a constant race against time. And uh, it is my hope, personally, having lived in this country for 15 years, that the new reproductive health bill that was recently passed will finally have some impact on that component of the demand. But these are changes that go along with uh, economic growth and also behavior change. But they will have a huge impact also on the rise supply and demand situation. But I believe in principle it is possible, yes. Thank you, Dr. Doberman. And thank you for the question and the response, which were directly relevant in a tangential sort of way. So, um, <laughs> the last point uh, Dr. Doberman made was that uh, why GM rice is, uh, the answer to that is really when there is a big humanitarian need. And uh, to talk about a particular variety, which Dr. Doberman also uh, discussed, which is golden rice, we have uh, Dr. Antonio Alfonso, the coordinator of the biotechnology program of the Department of Agriculture of the Philippines. Thanks, Tori. Good afternoon, everyone. So let me tell you about Gordon Rice and the Gordon Rice Project, in addition to those that have been mentioned by Akita. Gordon Rice is a genetically modified rice that was developed to make rice more nutritious by having the ability to produce the provitamin A carotenoid called beta-carotene in the grains. So the beta carotene in golden rice is the same nutrient that is found in fruits and vegetables and is converted into vitamin A inside our body. We are evaluating golden rice as an additional strategy to address vitamin A deficiency. Vitamin A deficiency is a form of micronutrient malnutrition, also called hidden hunger. Many people, particularly those, particularly young children and pregnant and nursing women, are vitamin A deficient. Vitamin A deficiency causes children to go blind, and vitamin A deficient people may also get sick and even die because their body have reduced ability to fight certain common infections. In the Philippines, for example, vitamin A deficiency affects 1.7 million children. People who rely on rice as their staple food are particularly vulnerable to vitamin A deficiency and that's because rice is not a source of vitamin A. While other strategies are effective in reducing vitamin A deficiency, this health problem continues to adversely affect many people, especially those living in areas that are hard to reach or those who have little means to have a diverse diet. Because rice is so widely produced and consumed in the Philippines and in Southeast Asia, improving its nutritional value could vastly improve people's nutrition. Results from studies so far are very encouraging. For example, it has been reported that one cup, just one cup of golden rice a day, could provide one half of an adult's vitamin A daily requirement. Through the project, through the golden rice project, leading nutrition and agricultural research organizations are working together to further develop and evaluate golden rice as a potential additional strategy to reduce vitamin A deficiency in the Philippines and in initially also in other Asian countries. There are four major objectives under this humanitarian and not for profit project. Number one, we aim to develop locally adapted varieties that meet farmer and consumer preferences. The same traits that were mentioned, the yield level, pest resistance, grain quality, and so on. Number two, we want to help establish the safety of, of golden rice because we want golden rice to have no unwanted effects to humans, animals, and the environment. Number three, we want to help evaluate whether consumption of golden rice improves vitamin A status. So later on, there will be a community level nutrition study, but that's after biosafety approval has been obtained. And number four, we want to ensure that if golden rice is deployed, it will reach the poor and those who are most in need. Golden rice is expected to have the same price as ordinary rice because the technology has been donated. This is a humanitarian project. 
golden rice will grow just like any ordinary rice in the field. It will not require any additional chemical inputs or additional care. And farmers will be able to save seeds from their harvest and use them in the following season. So what we hope in this project is for golden rice to be introduced eventually in the Philippines by Phil Rice and other partners as another approach to fighting vitamin A deficiency if golden rice is proven to match farmers' consumers' expectations for high-quality rice, proven to be safe, proven to improve vitamin A status, and accessible, affordable to those who are most in need. Let me summarize by stating that vitamin A deficiency is still a public health problem in the Philippines and golden rice is a potential strategy to help address vitamin A deficiency to be used in combination with other interventions. Thank you very much. We have a comment from Twitter which says the utens the sound of the utensils is distracting. <laughs> Um, so I believe that brings us to the close of the short uh, statements from our panelists. And now uh, we would like to open up uh, the session for discussion. If uh, you don't mind, maybe we can take three questions at a time and then field them to the, to the panel. Yes, Mandy. I'm Lynn Research Chan. I'm the uh, editor of the science page of Business Mirror and also I'm a member of the board of the Philippine Science Journalist Association. Uh, my questions are, I have two questions. Uh, one is, so what is the status of the golden rice now? And although uh, BT rice is, is not within the, uh, being, it's not being developed by ERI, so may we also know the status of BT rice of China? And number two, uh, what are the other researches on on uh, GM rice, which the ERI is planning to have? Does it have other plans to develop other GM rice? And the other researches on rice, although maybe not GM, that uh, uh, ERI is doing now or planning to do, that could uh, adapt to climate change. Thank you very much. Since two questions have been asked, perhaps just one more before we give it to the panel. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. I'm Mario Delasis of 702 DZAS. Uh, I'm particularly concerned about the safety of golden rice. Uh, can you answer categorically how safe is golden rice for human consumption? Thank you. Questions are status of golden rice, BT rice in China, other research on GM rice, and safety of golden rice. Just eat Okay, maybe, maybe I start and then uh, he and Tony can add a few other things that I may forget. Uh, status of golden rice. So I'll walk you through the process there. So we work uh, uh, coordinated by Erie, ourselves. Uh, we work in parallel with uh, three countries at the moment, the Philippines, Bangladesh, and Indonesia. There's a separate uh, network of institutions uh, in India, public institutions, and also, uh, I believe, uh, in China. Uh, but we focus on these uh, three countries at the moment, India, uh, uh, Bangladesh, Indonesia, and the Philippines. And each of these countries has a slightly different uh, process because of the different regulatory requirements in each country. These are national policies. So uh, there are some similarities and in information that we can use in all three countries, but there are also differences among the countries. The process involves uh, here in the Philippines as a first step the so called uh, biosafety approval for feed and food use. So, this is a big dossier that includes a huge amount of information on what the genetic modification is and also how it behaves, uh, and also uh, any kind of safety related issues, also in terms of human consumption. So, including 
questions such as uh, uh, whether it could cause allergic re reactions uh, or what are the proteins in there that uh, have been changed. So it's a complex uh, dossier uh, that has to be evaluated by the National Biosafety Committee and they would then make a recommendation whether this golden rice uh, would be approved for feed and food use at which point one can produce it to actually conduct then other studies related to uh, its uh, impact on, on human health that we want to demonstrate on the nutrition status of people. You cannot feed people this golden rice before you have that biosafety approval, okay? So all of these trigger. So then there another stage is what is called the propagation approval. So we, meaning also by the Philippine authorities, if you have that approval, then you can actually grow it freely in the field uh, without having uh, these very, well, or, or having a different level of protection as at present where we have to do everything in very confined, very guarded situations. So then the final step is uh, the normal variety release approval. Like any other new variety in the Philippines, golden rice variety, which will probably be PSPRC82, equipped with golden rice gene, will have to go through testing and meeting the performance criteria of the release of a new variety. That's the process. And then, if that would happen at that stage, it can go into seed production and uh, dissemination to farmers. So we're basically talking, when you look at this whole process, uh, several more years. How fast exactly, I'm not prepared to say, because that depends also how fast uh, some of these initial uh, approval state, stages uh, can be done. Several more years. Several, several. several. A few more years. <laughs> not seven. <laughs> Definitely not seven. <laughs> so that's the process, yeah. And we are on a very comparable timeline. Uh, in other countries, uh, so it is conceivable that a few years from now it, it should be reaching the intended uh, target population. So where are we now? Are you in the, are, are are the multi-location field trial? The multi-location trials, we've had uh, the field round uh, uh, just completed this season. So as you have noticed, one of those trials in Bicol was destroyed, uh, but that was one out of five. So we are now in the process of completing the dossier, dossier for submission for biosafety approval. So the first, for the first step. step. Uh, so that should happen in the very near future. And the multi, <coughs> sorry, and the multi location trials. That's over now. As that's far as we, well, there will be later other trials because of the <coughs> variety of the lease process. But at the moment, this is what we have to do to meet the requirements of the process. Before submission, yeah. plus it. So you're in probably already on field. No, we're in the we're, we're we're in the stage of submission soon for the biosafety approval. Now, it is possible to have the biosafety approval together with a propagation approval. You can you can actually choose to submit those at the same time. So, but at the moment. We are working on both. So. Doctor, uh, maybe a comment on the BT rice in China, since this was asked. Uh, Yuri itself uh, stopped working on BT rice more than 10 years ago. Uh, we don't work on it actively anymore, but of course, uh, colleagues in China and also in the private sector in other countries uh, have continued developing BT rice. And, uh, the performance evaluations have pretty much been completed in China. They have shown a consistent uh, decrease in pesticide use by farmers as a result of growing BT rice. And that is one of the primary intentions of that particular gene, reduction in spraying. So it is now for the Chinese uh, government to make the final release decision. So, that's not for me to, to comment on, but I expect that uh, very soon that there will be a decision of some kind. Because China obviously has a strong interest in uh, improving the environmental performance and also health of its uh, uh, consumers. 
And for that particular environment, uh, it could be uh, a much needed intervention. Other research we do on GM rice at Erie. Uh, I think uh, Sophie mentioned uh, when you look at our entire portfolio of research at Erie, we have an annual budget of about $90 million right now. Uh, less than 10 percent, probably only 5 percent, is actually directed towards the development of GM rice. So golden rice is one. The second one that we're actively working on is uh, enrichment. Uh, we have made a, a huge breakthrough this year is enrichment with iron and zinc. Iron and zinc. Iron and zinc. Zinc. Yeah. So micronutrient deficiencies. Yeah. So we have now a concept that could lead to the development of, let's say, a healthier rice that is richer in uh, beta carotene, iron, and zinc someday. Is it is it GM? That would be GM. Yes, because we don't get the iron enrichment other anywhere near that level. It's more than the 20, more than 20 ppm of iron and more than 50 ppm of zinc. So that's one. And the last one, there is a blue sky research we do, and this is what we call re-engineering the photosynthesis of rice. So that's a blue sky thing because uh, we call it C4 rice, C4, letter C number four. Uh, in nature, there are crops which have a very efficient photosynthesis mechanism, C4. Sugarcane is one, maize, sorghum. And there are crops which have a less efficient photosynthesis, rice, wheat, soybean. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to understand the genes controlling the more efficient photosynthesis. And we hope that by transferring those into crops like rice, we could increase the yield by 30 to 50 percent and also the water use efficiency and energy use efficiency. But that's a long-term project. Uh, it will take another 15 years until we know whether that works or not. So it's not going to be a GM product anytime soon. I'm sorry, I think we need to uh, include just, other just people in that. In, in, in a bit, yeah. we'll get back to that. Um, Dr. Alfonso, would you like to comment on anything? On the safety. Uh, maybe on, on the safety. safety. On the safety. Hello. Okay, thank you for the question on safety. Uh, I tell you, it's one of the considerations, not only it, by the public and also the regulators, but also by the private team. It's very important, and also because I'll be consuming golden rice when, when it gets approved, also my family and friends of so safety is very important. Um, so there are international standards in the evaluation of many products, including GM, for food and feed safety evaluation. So these are, these internationally accepted uh, guidelines and principles are being adopted by the local regulators here in the Philippines. So in the safety evaluation, basically they are comparing golden rice and ordinary rice, in this case, uh, PSBRC82. They look at the composition, they look at the, all of the things. Are there changes? Uh, in terms of composition and others between golden rice and uh, PSB RC 82. So, so we, we, we evaluate safety, I mean, our regulators evaluate safety by comparing between the two, and it should be a safe pass. Although it, theoretically it's possible to, to develop even better, even safer crop, but the standard is to, the, the, the GM crop should be as safe as the uh, ordinary rice in terms of uh, evaluation. Thank you. Um, there is a question from Estrella. Um, good afternoon, Estrella Gallardo, Manila Newsweek, and Philippine Science Journalist. With the GM rice, farmers can produce their own seeds. Unlike with the BT crops, where farmers will depend upon the supplier of seeds, the companies that supply the seeds. Is that correct? Yes, sorry, that's correct. Yeah. Just to answer that, that's correct because it's going to be in the background of a what we call an inbred variety. So you can keep your seed and you can grow it again if you want. Thank you very much. Let me add that the reason why you can you cannot plant again seeds from the from the harvest this season for the next season, it's because it's a it's a hybrid. It's not it's not because it is genetically modified. In maize. In maize. 
Yeah. So it's not because genetically it is genetically modified that farmers cannot plant the seeds again. They can if this is an inbred, just like the case for garden mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, <laughs> so we have an online question uh, on golden rice still. Are you confident that it would be the right trade-off to... Uh, it's not clearly stated, let me try to reinterpret this, of vitamin and golden rice as a...